bonus round for Gambit Esports. Yeah, look, great spams coming through that murder smoke because you almost saw them for heroic. The trains were so back and forth. They still have the bombing control, but as soon as it gets dropped on the site and it's down to the pet player, that's it. That round is absolutely finished. Heroic sort of got brought in a, a, a lot of baits, right? We saw that they looked like they wanted to go over towards A. More utility came down. They moved over towards the B side. Then Hobbit put down the incendiary and smoke, drew them back in towards the A play. It felt like they really didn't get control of the pacing on that T side round. Heroic yet to start here on T's side, which is, again, encouraging for Gambit, given the fact they need to win this map, map to stay in the series. Early CT side going well enough for them. Burst through and Axar and Linters in the apartments. They'll deal with the two Heroic players. Damage to the Stown as well. And smokes and flashes do go over. Shiro backed up here towards the library area. Knows that there's a player out long, tight gap to try see if he can get that frag together. Doesn't overextend against Stown at this stage, however. He's just going to be peeking in, taking shots. And she falling back as Heroic try and play a different angle here. Now, oh, what? Nafani tried to get somewhat aggressive out from long, but the opening deagle kill comes through for the T side. Unfortunately, they've already lost a couple of players of Nico and Tessus. If they can just get just another pick onto Shiro, that might just be able to open up this long control. Good shoulder bait from Stown. Borup does fall to Axile, but the Deagle taking some serious risks and actually managing to buy a bit of breathing room for his side. Kadian goes down now, so it's all left on him with the bomb out on the short position, trying to grab that rifle, do some sort of work back here. But no, Shiro takes him down nice and easy. 4 0 to the start here for the Gambit Esports side. Heroic back up on these rifles. Damage was done to Gambit. They should be able to afford the main M4s, and that's exactly what they'll get out here. Heroic, are they going to go straight AKs? Kanian with a Tech 9 and an AWP? No, just a Tech 9. Just a Tech 9? Yeah, it seems to be. Uh, okay. <laughs> he's got three grand, but he's going to opt not to buy here. Yeah, probably give himself enough money for the AWP in the next round. And, you know, if one of his teammates fall, then he could just pick up the AK from him. And try and keep that economy float nice and simple. Fast playing towards brackets. This is a set piece coming out for Heroic. Lots of smokes coming through towards that long position. Trying to wrap, not in towards CT, but back in towards the A site. Flashes over the top. The anchor's completely blind on this A site. Inters has been seen by the T side. Does find that first pick, and Axel tries to bake him with him. Nico and Tessus now the last couple left. They do open up the bomb site. A chance to get the bomb plan in. A couple of good trades there from Tess allowing the plant to be secured. A three on two advantage, however, favoring the Gambit side. They've got a kit in on Shiro. There's one kit also on the balcony of the uh, apartment's entrance. Kit on site and everything. There's plenty to work with for this side. They've just got to press forward slowly but surely here. M4 and Fama ending up with the AWP. Time is ticking. Tess and Nika have the crossfire locked. About 20 seconds remaining on this retake. Smoke back down. Try and blind off the pit entrance. The Farney falls. Tessus on the bomb spray through from Nico. Does not go well. Hobbit trades it. Tessus now left alone, but they're running out of time here. They're going to try and force him out of position, and he's not going to move. He's going to sit and go down with the bomb. Shiro's going to get that kill on the exit, but it's not around for Gambit. He goes up in flames as Heroic will win themselves one. And Gambit taking so long, expecting Tessus to push when he just didn't want to do so at all. Now, that's one of the first times I've really seen Gambit looking just awful. Like, that retake is so slow. I don't know why it's so slow. They've got the opening advantage. They've got themselves a three versus two. They've got kids in play. They've got util. And they just slow it down so, so low. And eventually, if no one peeks, if the, the player on towards the side of Tessus just doesn't swing, well, there's nothing they can do about it. Look at the buy. They were even bringing back into round six. Heroic. Now looking, going, looking to go in for another rush. This time, Inters had to shut it down. Only takes that one frag. Dink back on Stam will tag him to just 11 points of health. Will they be able to follow Sue? Well, they have got players all up and down in the mid control. One player has pushed in from the CT side. Nafani will be keeping his eyes on that banana position. Didn't see or hear anything. Now back to much more passive stance with the contact play. will jump behind the stack and try look for the T side players as they make their way out. Heroic, probably aware of this. Won't be peeking in just right now. They're on the clock a little bit lower. It all just comes down to the timing. I don't even think Nafani saw anything towards the bottom of Banana, but is going to fall back at the right time. 
No one's really in a rotating position. You've got a couple of players out from Library and Arch, but they still haven't made some movement. Finally, we're going to see Hobbit moving over. Self-boost up towards Nubox as well for Nafani. Nicely placed there, giving himself enough breathing room and time. Smoke down the Cinder for Hobbit. That should probably take us with the low HP players, or just allow them to line up the kills. Nafani gets one, Hobbit gets two. And now Stal left alone in the one versus four. Naded back by Hobbit. A big triple from the major champion. And a 5-1 scoreline right now for Gambit as they strike right back against Heroic. That lack of confidence, that little bit of poor play in the retake, non-existent here in round six. Yeah, that was more dominant. That's what we want to see there coming out from Gambit. Lovely little bit of movement coming out from Nafani on the side to get to that new box position by himself. And just having great support coming through from Hobbit out from CT on Rotate. Heroic off to a very, very slow start on this T side and a very lopsided buy, but they do have an AWP in play. I was questioning the Tech 9 buy for Heroic. I didn't understand it because it's it's an open Mac 10s. Open AKs would make more sense in this case, but. Heroic gonna go with this kind of setup. All players have had Kevlar for Gambit, so these Mac 10s are not gonna be as effective as they would hope it to be at this stage. Nafani with the M4 instead peeking in. There's gonna be a flashback. He hears the tags up. Flash it to line them all, and Stan will take him down. Over aggressive from the CT side, counter flashes from the T's will start to come in. Smokes down. Hobbit is going to get spotted at the edge of the smoke. Doesn't quite fall yet, has back up on the way, and Heroic, they retreat here. Yeah, look, they're, they're going into a bit of a buy scenario where they're, they're trying to help themselves out. They're on max round loss bonus, and they're going to be certainly a lot of money to work with in the next round. And They've already been able to do a fair bit of damage, bait out a lot of utility. The one thing they haven't really been able to bait out, though, is the util towards the A site. You've got Axel playing out from Graveyard, and getting closer to 40 seconds left on the clock. Only a single smoke for Stown, but the man advantage is here for Heroic. Set up. Auto, it seems. Okay. Two players popping out. Great move from Axel. Well, HG's in, does take him down, lays back towards the apartment, and Inter tries to hold him on the site, the AWP trades it back to a 2 versus 2 but Hobbit, getting a wall bank kill through the smoke, takes Kaden with the orb, 1v2, he's gotten two frags already, quad... ...in towards Hobbit's position, takes him down, all left on zero, takes the wall bank headshot, what a kill from him. <laughs> what an orb shot. You can see what Gadium was trying to do there out from the pit position. Isolate both of those 1v1s. Jump spot in towards that short position, but an absolute banger of a shot comes out from Shiro. And Gambit Esports are really applying a lot of pressure on this CT side, Jay. And they're even going to take a tactical timeout. And them, out of all teams, to take one. So... Where was this gambit in map one? Because that was the kind of gambit we needed to see to win overpass. And I mean, just shocking awe to try and adjust and take Inferno. Like, we had this one written off from the word go in map two, just off the basis of just the fact they lost overpass, you know? Their best map in the pool by far and away. And Heroic currently down by a margin of five rounds tactical taken by the russians rifles are back in play for the t side no awp i believe there's one on the floor of the ct spawn for Shira to pick up gambit let's see how they'll adjust against heroic let's see how heroic will try trying back in they just need the rifles to try swing momentum back i mean damage has been done to gambit so there is reset potential as well yeah, certainly so. Single round loss bonus, there's like no money to work with in terms of the reserve either. A little bit of utility coming down towards Banana, but not being taken by the CTs. Heroic just running out their default. With triple play over towards B, something we haven't really seen from Gambit so far. It's normally been a bit more of a lean towards the A site and then rotates coming back to stack it up. It might be the right read though. Down and Kadian leaning in, flash over, there's a good kill from Shiro, lands a collapse tag as well, Nafani flashed in, no blind face, he goes a little bit too early, gets the kill off on one reface and Borup ends up losing his life, and Gambit looking alive on the CT defense, a four versus two.
Tessas and Nico siphoned off from each other. One player's all the way up at short. The other one's back at the banana position. The bomb on the back of Tessas. Got to link up with Nico if they want a chance at this one. There's a CT in the way at the apartment, so there's very few options here for Heroic. Yeah, this round is pretty much done, right? I mean, even that bomb going to cross out for mid should just be seen by the player in the apartments. And there it is. Simple kill coming through from Axel. Nico's now left 1v4. Now, he does have the element of surprise coming through from Brackets, but time's low. He's going to have to trade out to Axel, and he's even reading that he's coming in from the apartments. Another kill comes through from Axel. Picks up an AK-7 now on the board for Gamba Esports. What a performance we are seeing from them on the CT side. And I think we're just seeing the individuals come alive. I think that Vashiro and Axel, while they were playing somewhat decent on that first map, we really didn't see that star potential. But I think we're starting to see it now. Oh, yeah, they've been stellar. You know, by far and away, the, the stellar duo of this matchup so far. Again, not like they were playing bad on overpass. It was just this map is yeah. amazing for them. AK's on two, M4's on two others. AWP for Shiro. Galil for Nico and contact to Banana for the heroic side. Gambit not going to lean up that far here. Incendiary for Hobbit will try to block them. As soon as he sees some utility coming in, he's just going to try to see if he can stop them from the main entrance. Seems to be a definitive hit though. Smoke's coming up, Incendiary's down. They're going to try and siphon them off. First Incendiary hits the wall instead for Hobbit. Flashbang over for Nafani. They have been blocked for the moment. Now they even peak with that. Resmo comes down towards Banana too. That's going to hold them at bay. Play the man advantage. Rotate a fourth player over or third player over. Sorry, I should say. Is playing out from Speedway of Shiro. Maybe thinking that it's going to be a play back towards the A side because Heroic are now starting to leave this Banana presence. And they've just got no utility between them. They put so much early pressure in towards the top of Banana. And after they lose that opening pick, that they've got nothing to play for now. Leaning back in towards A, Shiro's going to be here on a contact peak. I'm face two players in, face up. Shoulder bait still gets connected by Shiro as Tessess goes down. He refaces the long position, looking onto the brackets entrance, out towards Quad. He looks and catches Katie and almost gets the next player in Borup. Bomb on his back. If he goes down, it's round. Said and done. Does the AWP continue extending? I don't think it does. He's had his fill. And now it's up to the CTs on the site in Inters and Axile here. No, he faces again. Almost catches Bora. <laughs> Bora gives up his life. You talked about Shiro and Axile having great games. That's a perfect example right there. And Axile set to finish it off. 8-1. Gambit winning the CT side. And Heroic finally taking their first tack. <laughs> Shiro is 15-1 in nine rounds. He's having such a game. Oh boy, Heroic are having a tough time on this T side. We're not seeing them winning out most of the majority of the post plans. They've only managed a single round so far in this first half. Now, we do know that they've had some rough T sides over on Inferno in Katowice so far against Big. Uh, they started on T side, or sorry, I should say they started on CT side. They got 12 rounds, but there was a big, big comeback coming through from the German side. Ended up going 16 to 12, getting four rounds on T to close out that map against Spirit only yesterday they uh, started ct they only got six rounds on the t side again so we have seen maybe not to this extent but some weak ish t side some heroic and well this is just showing that they're getting battered by the cis squad yeah utter domination from the gamut side so far utility in to try getting the mid control and the apartments positions for the heroic side Shiro going to back off and try to reposition as Axel holds face with the AK in. Tech 9 fires away, sees away his position on the traces, turns on Tessess and takes him out to begin things. Nade to the next player's position. Doesn't do as much damage to Nico as they'd like, but to start out, a kill on Heroic, losing one of the key pistol players. Of course, there's only pistols in play for this round. Yeah, not much investment here. If they can get away with a bomb plant, get away with a couple of kills, then they'll be happy with that. Boost coming up towards a flower pot position for Nafani. Just jiggle peeking coming out from Hobbit. As soon as he sees contact, he'll put some util down. Nade up towards the top of Banana. Decent damage to that T side. A tag heavy. Incendiaries continuing on to that uh, main position. Smoke also ready for Hobbit. Puts it down. Siphons off. Respoke back towards the CT. Frost. Two players out. I thought that he got both those kills for the transfer. Nafani was there on the move spot doubling up and dropping in against the triple. I thought he got that kill as well. But no, that's Shira stealing it in with the AWP. And the pistol's cleaned up by the heroic side. Gambit. 
conceding a single round so far in this map up. Will they concede a second against the rifles of Heroic? They are being brought down on the AKs. And yeah, good defensive just being held all across the board here for the CT side. Yeah, they're, they're not cracking under pressure at all, are they? And what I love too is that no. you've even got players not overextending when they've got man advantages. They're playing incredibly disciplined. They're making sure that they're not getting sort of baited in. They're not getting too hungry. Heroic have only taken a single tactical in this first half. Nade comes down towards a banana position. Not a massive amount of damage done to this T side. It's actually Nico with the opening spam. One for one train coming out from the apartments. Yeah, Axar responding over in the uh, entryways. Looking for a secondary kill on Nico, and indeed does find it. Four versus three gained by Gambit. One more time, they have done damage to that player, though he's going to need some backup because he's still the only player here on the A site. If they can overwhelm and take him down, he's in an open angle right now. Gets back towards the graveyard position to just uh, you know, buy himself a bit more cover, but he's going to need his teammates to rotate in from Speedway because Heroic, they go to A, they basically win a 3v3. It all comes down to timing, right? Like, if they come in long, silently, then maybe Axel is sort of caught off. He's low HP. They're putting so much emphasis over towards that B site. It's all going to come into the slow warp from Borup. Do they check that angle? Axel needs to get at least one kill on the trade. Borup looking up. Back to the corner. AK scene. He gets a kill. What? Borup gets that trade together, though. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant from Axel. It sets up Nafani, enters in Hobbit. Bombs on site, Borup checking all angles. They'll plant towards the uh, front corner. Nay, close. That does damage as well to Kadian. Trying to get him out of the way with the incendiary. Getting off that bomb site. Swinging around towards the short control. Looking towards the long entrance here at brackets where Inters is leaning up. And he still gets the kill. Borup remains. 1v3. One headshot found towards Hobbit. Needs to get two more. One coming in from Graveyard. One coming in from Short. Sees his second man. But distracted by that player. Leaves Nafani plenty of room to get the kill. And get double digits for Gambit. Uh, I, I, I don't know what's going on, Dweg. I genuinely <laughs> was not expecting this. I thought Heroic were going to smack Gambit about. That's not happened here at all. Yeah, it's it's really the other way around. Um, Heroic have, have had a really tough time. They're not able to find the conversion on that post plant. They don't even have the advantage. How Axel is able to get a one-on-one -on -one trade in Graveyard on an off angle with 19 HP and Stown pre-aiming, I, I don't know. Uh, but it just a little bit of luck, a little bit of success, and a little bit or maybe a massive amount of skill coming through from Gambit to just continue this dominant affair on the CT side. Heroic. I mean, they can only get five rounds on T-side at this. They're going to try another quick play into the brackets. There's Inters and Shero combining to get the opening kill on Borup. Inters will get taken back by the HE in towards Quad. One trade back by Stown. Turns it into a three versus three. He's on 20 HP, though. So Gambit take a HP advantage above the T-side. Flash over from the short control. Keeps Shiro blind at this stage. He's got counter flashes and AWP peeking in. Oh, he gets the headshot on Nico. That's a good sequence. Back in for a bit more. He's firing back on a player. Nippet. He almost got the wall bang in. Stown and Kadian taking damage. Rotos back in. Might Take the Farney out, but still the trades are good from Hobbit coming in from short. Kadian once again left in a clutch scenario, gets a secondary frag, and now one on one on Shiro, getting towards the bomb site. But his back turns on that short control, and Shiro makes his own 3k happen to get Gambit 11 1 up. Heroic fail yet again on the rifle rounds. It's like they're playing out without pressure. And, and maybe that's because they know they're already a map down in the series and it's a lower bracket game that maybe they're not playing with a lot of pressure. They're kind of going into this and saying, right, let's play a little bit more looser. Let's give our players a little bit more freedom and let's just try and see if we can just show up. And that's just what they're doing on Inferno. Heroic, it's not as if they're, they're playing a bad T side. Like they're getting decent trades. They're doing okay with the entries, but it's just the mid rounds and late rounds in which they're really struggling with. Shiro's 19 and 2, Axel's 16 and 6. They haven't really needed Hobber, Inters, and Anaphany to do anything special except find those trades, find those engagements, and then. Leave it up to Shiro and Axel to do the heavy lifting because that's what they've been doing in this first half. Yeah, I was going to draw your attention to that, um, uh, to those kill counts because those two players are just, <laughs> they've just, they've ascended out of the server into another realm by comparison to not only the, their own teammates, but also to Heroic, who they themselves have not surpassed any higher than six frags on Cadian.
which even that is below the bottom fragger of Inters on Gambit. So, call it overperformance, ridiculous sort of like levels from Shiro and Axile, definitely from Shiro, I have to say. Or underperformance from Heroic. Either way, it's led to this 11-1 and Gambit, a serious, serious lifeline being bought in this series. All they gotta do is get past this map, take us to Mirage and buy the second chance against this camp. AK is in on Stown. Hero AK set up on a half bite, but he's got to be a serious hero for this side. They might try and go quick into brackets again. I mean, they've tried it countless times. Oh, just a straight spam coming through to the top of Banana Smoke. You're kidding. Absolutely no vision. Yes, they at least recover that AK, but what a start again from Gabbard and it's Hobbit to find the opening kill. And Nico grabbing that AK real quick because they're going to need it to try to get a basis to work with in this map up, in this round at the very least. Axile and Inters on the uh, apartments and the short face. Taps through, trying to catch players off from that short presence. They know that there's a player on the balcony now. And Shiro seeing nothing towards long. Heroic playing a very careful default here. Yeah, not looking to really find too much map territory, at least over towards the A side. Already losing that opening player towards Banana. It looks like they're going to have a bit another crack at it. Lurk Smoke comes down. Nafni playing up towards the first Oranges position. Normally been out towards the Flower Pots. And Resmoke in from Hobbit. That's just going to slow it down further. And Nefardi's got full nade sets. So as soon as this smoke starts to dissipate, they could just tank in all the nades. Gap there for Hobbit to work with. I think he's got a T-side player. Eventually takes out KD for it. Flashbang keeps him blind, so he can't take out the kill on Tete. That's what Nefardi's there for. And still <laughs> smash the smoke. Gets a 3k. Borat falls next. And all five players for no good trades. Gambit looking as confident as ever. And this was what we were hoping for from this side. You know, coming into this tournament, there was a lot of optimism around Gambit, a lot of optimism around teams like them and Spirit, especially Spirit. But Gambit, they themselves had some upset potential. And finally, they're starting to shine through here against Heroic. So probably not in the map that we were expecting it to do, you know? This could be on track for the most one-sided performance map we have seen in the entire group stage. I know that we had a couple of the play-in games go quite one-sided, but... Nothing quite like this in the group stage. Nade going down towards Banana position. The nade damage is incredibly high, especially for the B anchors between Hobbit and Nafani. Gambit getting off to another decent start. Flash is over as Nico finds the first kill in the apartments, getting up close and personal against Axile. The Banana campaign was the main concern for Heroic. But now they might have to shift their priorities as Inters and Shiro may be left to defend the ace uh, positions. Two players on either side. One man is starting to rotate away from B, though. We'll swap places with Shiro instead so that AWP can be on the B side. There's going to be a moment of time where there's going to be nobody on the A play, however. Only Inters. Uh, M4 towards Mini Pit. Nafani now gets his way towards long position. And Heroic start to act out of the apartments. Max 10 to drop in. Inters going to get checked. Still gets the kill. Nafani comes in to support. They drop that bomb in the pit control. Advantage for Heroic for the first time in a very long time. And now Stown chimes in to deal with Hobbit, leaving Shiro left to save. And Heroic, that was the best execute we've had all game long so far. But that has come off the back of a very awkward rotation from Gambit. I'm a little bit surprised that Shiro is actually saving here. Like, you're going into round 15, and there's just so much money on this CT side. Maybe he doesn't want to give up uh, a secondary AWP for the T side because they don't have to reinvest it if he falls. That's probably the only way, but he could go for it, just try his luck. But just some really good trades, and I think it really helped that they found that opening pick. A Gambit sort of being caught a little bit in rotation. Nice trades come out between the Moto and Mini Pit player from the T side. He's got an aid, Shiro, but... Yeah, not really in a position to put it down in towards a corner. Heroic finally gets something going for themselves. That they do. 12 to 2. 10 rounds still leading for Gambit. Still a very one sided CT performance in the Danes. Set in. With AKs and orbs for the final round of the half, as you mentioned. Gambit will be up to the orbs. The M4s are standard. Utility set in. 
Let's see whether they can make it a 13-2 and set themselves up for a pistol whip and a win for this Russian camp. Out towards Bernardo again for the defaults for Hero, taking a bit of damage very early on by the HEs and the incendiaries. It drives them back pretty far here. Yeah, Heroic bringing a lot of players early on towards the Banana contact to take that area of the map. A Gambit playing a relatively passive approach with the AWP leaned over towards that long control. A very decent buy for Heroic to bring forward into round 15. Now, the lurk from Nico has actually suppressed them for a couple of opening kills over the course of this first map. If they can try and see if they can get him to just get a, an initial engagement, try and get a bit of an advantage, that could work. But instead, they're just leaving Banana completely, starting to regroup into brackets. Less than a minute to go. And Heroic conceding that part of the map to try and regain a play towards A, which, to be fair, has kind of been, I mean, stretching the term here, but the most successful site to hit so far. Well, two players on the central site defensive and playing off anchor towards the um, uh, pit control as well. Here they come, into smoke down. One CT player overwhelmed by the numbers game. Blind sprays will do damage to Tess. does not get that kill. And Molotov's in to try drive him out. Three Molly's coming through. He's still on the box. He's still tasting play here. I don't know if they've driven him out of position or do they read that he's driven to the corner at this stage. Boost up, one player seen. That's a kill. Spray fire rushes down. Deagle set out for him. Can't take his man down. Time has been bought for the CTs to rotate, but the man advantage is not there for Gambit. Uh, Heroic looking to try and get their third round of the T-side half. Another Resimo coming in towards that moto position and they're trying to get the boost together. It's just not happening at all. So many sound cues coming through for Heroic and for Gambit. They're just suppressed behind this utility and for the retake. Heroic oh, trying to find an angle to work with here in the apartments. I set back in the bedrooms. Doesn't see anybody. Time is starting to lean up. 20 seconds left. There comes goes down. Hobbit and Shiro in a tin. They can't see anything on the Heroic from the AKs, get a third for here for Gambit. your destiny, slay your enemy, raise a legacy, no more apologies, stress your abilities, gather the energies, pull yourself back together, and stay off track forever, child of the nation, we seek redemption, time for salvation, today is meant to be, day of victory, time for history, Reverse the tendency, fight the entropy, channel your rivalry. You're praying for fortune to come. You're hearing the sound of the drums. It's too late to backtrack, go back your back now. Keep your feet on the road and stand up. You've got what it takes to fight back. Don't stop until you black out, out, out. Stand up, up, you got what it takes to fight back, back Don't stop until you back out, out Give what you got, show them how to make a miracle Stand up, up, you got what it takes to fight back, back Don't stop until you back out, out Give what you got, show them how to make a miracle Go save your team, be a hero Take home the cup, be a star Be waiting for you, take aim, shoot your arrow It's your time to shine, show them who you are Stronger, gotta go faster Gotta get better, gotta work harder It's fight or fight now, getting it up now Go with the more, go for the goal Lead up the stadium, you know how it's done Stand up
And that is how things have worked out at this stage. 12 to 3. Can Gambit keep it together? You've got the double flash and smoke in for Hobbit and the finally to try to do just that. Double flash and HG for Borup and Kanian. Heroic. Set their CT side. Let's see if Stan can make this happen. Two quick kills. Dropping the bomb with nade stacks in from Kadian. And further taps to the head as Hobbit goes down. Nafani, last man standing. And Heroic coming alive on CT side. Oh, what a star coming through from Stan. Out towards Banana Contact. Couple of kills coming through for Broken Ball. He keeps pressing forward. And more death rains from above. A great start. A great round coming through from Heroic. And down to one man in particular. That was such an aggressive approach coming through for Gambit, trying to get quick control up towards the top of Banana, but Stown, he was having none of it. A perfect taps to the head, a perfect way to get in here for Heroic, and a perfect way to carry on the momentum from the end of the last half. Gambit were utterly dominant throughout the course of the entire first uh, CT side, now onto their T half is where things start to get dicey. At least that's what you might suspect here, Heroic. Back in control. Now, can they keep that control is the new question of the moment for this team. Gambit up on the Glocks here, losing that pistol pretty spectacularly. They're up against the uh, rifles and just going basic eco. No force buying in from the T's early. Now, we've certainly seen some decent Infernos coming out from Gambit against top-tier opposition. We saw them take 12 rounds against Astralis. They had a couple of victories recently over Mouse Sports and had a, a close game against FPX. EG got to double digits against them only a few days ago. So we do know that uh, they do have at least some experience on this map, whether it's been win or loss in a competitive fashion. But they're already up from 12. Four more will do it. How much further can Heroic bring this back? Well, they're only up against a Glock round in this one. Tess holds the fam out here towards the balcony position, checking and baiting for info towards that short presence. Sees nothing. Smoke comes down instead. Flash over to Seen. Missing out of plays on everybody, but his SMG teammates have the backup, and they'll get plenty of money for their trouble. One player left in Hollet, dealt with by the likes of Nico. Three kills for Kadian in that round, and a fifth of the bullet of Heroic. Unfortunately for Gambit, running into the wrong place at the wrong time. Now they can have rifles to try and get some right rounds. Uh, get those rifles forward. And finally going to force down into a Galil to just get himself a little bit more utility. Well, it should be AKs up for everybody else. And you've got to wonder too, for Shiro and Axel, does this continue, right? We saw them have an unbelievably strong performance in that first half between the Rifler and the AWP. Now going forward onto T side, let's see if they can replicate. A bonus round coming through from Heroic. Still quite a few SMGs in play. Look at how many players they bring it over towards Banana to start this off. I think a heavy Banana presence from Gambit. I mean, obviously they did go for that very early in the pistol round. Not the same could be said for the uh, eco of the rifles. Hobbit out towards the apartments. As most of it is actually passive mid control for the T side. They've gone for very little map control here on these defaults. Gives them little to work with for the execution if it comes in right about now. UMP at Borup leaning up as Hobbit leans downstairs into the boiler position. Just looking for those opening kills here on the T side. No, getting a fair bit of map presence, at least in towards the apartments. And Axel probably realizes, though, with that deep banana smoke, that there's at least some of this map presence being taken away. A jump spot coming through from Stout. Another re-smoke comes in. Heroic putting a lot of pressure in towards banana, and Gambit are just letting them have it. KL coming on an Axel as Borup does get aggressive and does get shut down with the trades. A lot of CT aggression here to banana, though. That M4 could be a concern on Stout. How much info will he get, or do they just avoid him completely? It might be the latter. He's not responding. No, no, he's moving. Stown is moving up towards that mid position, looking for kills, gets into his trade, still good for Shiro. Three on three, Fama close of Tesses, takes out one player in Hobbit. With Shiro to swing back, get that kill together. Still Dink landed on that player, so a two on two. And now Nico is also low HP, Nafani's closing in from the graveyard position. Smoke down, scene burst up, still gets the frag, and now looks for the AK. On for the A to Shiro, he has no idea, gets that shot on a quadra kill, but back turned to Kadian as he swings at the right moment, keeps the round together for Heroic. He's sixth up to the CT board. A lot of pressure coming through from the heroic side. Okay, Dan, 
don't know what quite he was going all the way down there for, but he will be able just to get that round together, get that defuse on. And look, it came down to the aggression coming through. We saw a lot of banana influence coming through from the mass majority of players to start off from Heroic. They end up taking the banana control. They re-smoke down a couple of times. They even push further aggressively. They drop that bomb. A couple of nice off angles are being held between at least Tessus out from that short position. And then Nico tries to stay alive for long enough to allow Cadian to win that one versus one. So Heroic have been completely flawless now in the second half. And so far, so good. Of the six to the board, the Galil's in the three other players. Oh, oh, Shiro, that's a good shot. And that's a start. Is he going to get aggressed by Nico as well? No, he smartly backs off. That's a good play because... I mean, they need to try and isolate him and try and see if they can take him down with low HP. That nade will be a start, but straight fan spam through the smoke allows Nafani to double up. Five versus three, he's aggressing even further, and finally gets shut down by Stown. Yeah, that nade actually pushes the AWP back, so Stown's able to pick it up. Glass cannon AWP from Shiro, that nade tanks onto him to very low HP, but... There's a bit of a lurk going out towards the B side, but look how quickly they're looking to try and get in towards this B control. Oh, Bar. Was he seen on the edge of that smoke? I don't think he was. Re smoke down from the CT side. So going to buy a bit more cover. Borup is waiting. Sees so Axile knife out, jumping in amidst the air. And Heroic bringing back the awkward start in this round to a three versus three. Tessa is in the apartments. Hobbit has no idea. That's an AK to work with now for the CT side. And the AWP is Shiro keeping his eyes locked onto that boiler position. Now he's going to be out on down with his own AWP in place, shuts down the likes of Hobbit. And now Inters, or Shiro I should say, now Inters left alone. One versus three, Galil in tow. And somehow, despite an incredible set in from the Gambit side, a fantastic AWP shot to kick things off, they may bring this round back once again. Inters on 28, will get a kill off on one man, might isolate Tess as well. Oh, just barely below me, evades the kill. But 20 seconds to get this round together, it's not gonna happen. No, certainly not. He could try and get out to the bomb site, but Borup's already here. Four nades are coming down out towards the entrance. Three HP. He might even be able to get a bomb plan in. That would be quite successful. No, just that last tick. Tessa's swinging in. And you've got to think for Gambit, they had the perfect start. The AWP pick coming through from Shiro Glass Cannon. The spray coming through from the Farney 2. That was a 5 on 3 advantage, but Heroic still convert the rounds even with two players alive. Again, I'm kind of shocked that they brought that back. I honestly thought that that was an amazing start for Gamba. Yes, a bit too overly aggressive from the player that went long, but instead of two for one trade that was brought back by some silliness and a lone style of playing in the open, tactical pause for Gambit. And you talked about some of those styles needing to come alive, but right now their new focus needs to be on just keeping those uh, keeping those team plays in because you saw how the player, I believe it was Axar, that made his way out of the uh, main cross and into the, uh, the CT cross past the smokes. Like, his aggression was completely unsupported by the Gambit side, and the kill coming in easy to equalize the situation ultimately led to their demise. So four rounds in a row for Heroic. Gambit taking a tactical pause, but not opting for a buy here. Scout set for Shiro. Deagle's in. Tech 9 out for Axile. Glock in for Inters as well. Let's see if Heroic can just balance this one out, keep the uh, round streak running. Whether these Deagles can do some damage here. Got to remember too, this was Gambit Esports up 12 to 1 at, at a single point. So this is six rounds in total up for the heroic side, including the back end of that first half. They're starting to get a lot of momentum. Nade stacks coming in. There's nothing Axel could do against that. Great utility usage out from Heroic. Yeah, just cut stuck into the corner thanks to the incendiary. Dealing with an eco pistol. One of the only two pieces of Kevlar as well in for Gambit, so. Losing out on that front as well. Up in Acadian takes the farning. Another kill back on Nico. Next, looking against the scout. Inters will fall. Hobbit left alone. Bomb out in the open. 1v5 with not a single point of damage done to the CT side. And well, much like how Gambit were on the back foot over on overpass, Heroic have been able to bring it back in similar fashion. And within only four of the lead here. We're looking for exit frags, hoping that someone from the CT side aggresses, but Heroic know that the economy would be better for them if they just let the timer run out. It is, it is very similar though, isn't it? 
Like, although it's not yep. exactly the same, it's similar in the sense that we saw, what, Heroic getting an 11-4 half on overpass, and then Gambit looked like they were coming back, and then maybe thought, okay, we could have a bit of a challenge on our hands here. Now, the one thing that did happen was that uh, Heroic were able to close it out in the end, where for Gambit, they are struggling to get these rounds together now. And they had such a momentum shift from the get-go. And now more dominance is coming through. The gap is closing round by round by round. We've got to see more tacticals coming out for Gambit. They can't just keep letting this momentum swing. We're seeing Kadian find some real good confidence. We're seeing AKs up on that city side. Only one going into round 21. But Heroic, I think this is where we really start to see them being at their best. What we need to see from these guys in Gambit is just a, an adjustment to try and play more as a team, to try and play for trade. You know, they were trading so well in that first half. The same cannot be said in this one. Find an adjustment real quick before they end up losing out full control. It's Borup and Nico here towards the uh, brackets control and quad and brackets itself. Tessus will be the third man to join the fray. Early utility up here in the apartments will ensure that Nafani has not progressed much further until now. Gambit definitively looking for an A play. They've gone B several times, not worked out for them. Out of the gate, the AK sprays come through. Tessus finds one, Nafani can trade it. M4, Borat, awkward spray back, does catch a kill. Damage done to Axar, but not fragging out on him. Shiro returned by Stown on the other side of the site here towards this uh, bracket position. He goes falling, and the bomb's got to cross out of Apps here. Nafani's pushing forward. Axar's still playing a little bit carefully, though. He needs to cross and get this plant in. He's so low. He's scared of trying to get that bomb over. More utility coming down into the site. The apps pop tried to come out for Gambit. And while they are in a two versus three, you can't really say that was too successful. More utility for Nafani. And are they trying to take the fight? They might be wanting to get aggressive up from long rather than getting that bomb down. And it leaves Axel now in a one versus two. He's got the info that there's at least one player a stand out towards long, but he doesn't really know where Borup is. Is he going to try to pull him for a fake and make him think that he rotated back towards the beach site? I mean, Heroic are in perfect rotation positions here at the arch. The time is running low, and his, you know, his, his, like, like you know, pacing has allowed his teammate to fall. Now the CT move up on him. He might not even get a bomb plant out of this round. Sneaking up, got to go for the default plunks. It's the safest one. Seen right there, takes a fight, wins a headshot. 1v1 against Bora. And the spray goes better for the CT player. A nine to the board of Heroic. And I think that you mentioned it right there, playing scared. Gambit have gone from playing confident in the CT side to playing scared on T. Axel has run out of steam. He was on 16 frags, 18 frags or so, just prior to the start of the, of the first half. And now he's not really moved that much further forward here. He needs to get going and needs to stop playing scared because it was the scared play that allowed Heroic to adjust against the Ts. No, that was the best round from Gambit in the second half that we've seen yet. But even still, it's not a round victory. Heroic now make the difference three. This is incredible to think Heroic are bringing this back as far as they are. But Gambit, they just need that one round. That one good round that's going to just change it all. Money for a couple of players is very limited in the reserve. Single round loss bonus, obviously, for Heroic. Bringing a lot of players early up towards Broken Wall. Now rotating them back. They're bringing four players in total over towards the A site. Gambit. Here towards Apartments once again. Look at SS. Swing and hit. Actually, no. Missing out a spray. Nafani can take the kill as a result. Nico and Borup on site. Gets straight for two for two as Axel chimes into Borup on the site himself. Nade back. Damage done to Hobbit. Not as much as they hoped it would be. He's down to 71 in a three on three situation. Plant secured. One Gambit Lurker out towards the mid position. And they own a second mid in apartments now for Shiro. He's got to get more involved with this defensive, though. Got to go for a very late Lurk in this one. The M4 of Nico leans up, looks back to the back lines, keeps his eyes on Boiler, expecting a T-side player to be here somewhere. Shiro closing in two to be seen. He's going to backstab against the time. It could be perfect. Sees them both. Takes out one. One player was watching. Tags him, forced him away. Still, Axel turns on Stown, and Kadian's left alone in a one-on-three situation. Got to fall back and save the AWP. And at long last, it has taken a long time to get here, but Gambit will get their 13th, finally get things started here on t -Sub. Fall shortly, Kadian. Oh, I thought he was just going to be able to hold on to it. Shiro finally finds the angle to be able to deal with him. 
So it's 13 up for Gambit. And look, there is enough money to go for the reinvestment. Stan doesn't have a lot. Nico doesn't have a lot. That AWP not being saved in actually can long-term make quite a difference here for Heroic. I'm going to struggle to get the buy together, at least with the money that's going to be left in the reserve. And even a couple of players are going to be forced down onto SMGs. And this could be the breaking point. This could finally be the control. Heroic needs to recover the economy. Gambage the Exile alone in banana tanking a nade behind it didn't do as much damage as they hoped it would be this oh he gets the kill on katie running away from it duck behind the stack the cts don't extend but they started things off fantastically taking a power player out of position two incendiaries will stall the hit though up to about the anchors trying to draw out that you coming out from exile a tough duty cutoff, cut off but he lands the shot lands the immediate headshot and now gets the advantage going for gambit very passive towards the A defenders too. Crossfire being set between Nico and Tessus. Gambit have still got options though. They can fake over towards A, go over to the B site, and Heroic are going in for a complete gamble. They're rotating off a of B. They're going to stack everyone at A. Time's running short. We play a set here, and the Molotov's down. The finally with the AK. Stown peeks in, takes the trade. That's only one player on the A site stack, though. The four CTs inbound. Four on four. Do they want to go for this? Do they want to try for the retake? Well, Stown will look past the smoke, try blind fire against them. Oh, firing between T side players. Let's all three cross, unfortunately. And with no response from the other CT members, it looks like it's just going to be a hunt that will be coming through on the post plan. But no, Stown does take one on Inters. Hobbit's going to hear them coming. I don't think he can catch the T side players, though. He's going to let them sneak right past the retakes on for Heroic here. Yeah, Hobbit's got to be the one to really do the damage. Now, the T-side players on the site, they can't peek. They can't overextend. They've just got to try and wait out the time. Wait for Hobbit to make the backstab. No one's expecting this at all. He gets that first pick, tries to slow it down, makes sure he gets a second. And our starter, Nico, are trying to come in for the retake. The AWP is holding the back lines. And Shiro is now caught out towards Newbox. Have they got it? They don't have a kit. I don't think they've got time for this, Jay. And no, no kit in play for the heroic side. Means they've got to back off and save them to their weapons. Gambit Esports, get up to 14. But how they adjusted with that luck and then got the trades on the players on site. One shot through the smoke secured Heroic the opportunity to go for that retake. And you could see they almost made it work. But losing a lot in that round. Again, Orp AK saved in is going to be the only weapons to work with Heroic. Do they force down? Do they try and cripple Gambit? I think they do, and that's what they do right here. Fama coming in for four up upgrade pistols on Deagles on two. And it's do or die for the CT side. Yeah, it was such a big streak coming out for Heroic, but now Gambit have been able to find a bit of a compromise, be able to get back involved. AWP gets boosted up towards the bottom of mid. A player could peek out from Mexi of Shiro with a Mac 10. There's Inters on the other side of it. First pick gets found by Katie, and that's a good start. Heroic needing picks like that, dealing with Axile, dealing with the opening fragger. But other than that, it goes completely quiet across the map. T side players here towards the apartments might be a bit of a concern for the likes of Tess. That Deagle up close though, got to land the heads very early here. Two players to find. AK taps. Round the corner. East Bams gets one kill. Not quite the second. But that's still a two for one trade to the favor of the CT side here. And Gambit, who are going to try to act upon their A entry. Molotov's in. Deagle still close. It's down. AWP locks on the shot. Drops the bomb. Shiro here on the default plant position. Desperately fighting to get some sort of control back on the default boxes. Catches down off. Knows that Cadian's in the back corner. The two versus two. The AWP repositioning. Catching Shiro off as he looks the wrong way at the wrong time. And Nefani sneaking behind them here and towards the long control. Does the AK realize it at the CT side? He does now. Spray connects. Got to catch that orphan smoke. We'll clear. We'll see information. Oh! But the spray goes left and right at the target. Does not connect to the kill. And Kadian ends up with four to his name and a brilliant tenth for Heroic. <laughs> what a round from Gadian. Oh, he was playing in the site. He was just hoping that his teammates were going to be able to bait around enough for him to find those connections. A massive hold coming through for the main AWP and IGL. And Heroic, well, they are fighting for survival. And Gambit, 
They are going to be ecoing going into round 25. This is still possible to bring the comeback in. Eco for Gambit here. They've got upgrade pistols, no Kevlar, leaning back on their loss bonus, which fortunately is plentiful at this stage. But needing to get the decent rifles together. Naden is the center of mass. Kadian, first frag on the AWP. SMG of Nico pressured, but they do not lose the advantage here. Three on two. And Tessess retreating back to the pit control. They're going to try to wrap the B site. They've got one player to deal with, but that might not be a bad shout here. Yeah, Barup's hearing a little bit of this information and actually seeing that between the two of them that there's no more a site presence. Stan, his attention being brought over to CT. This can have to be a long-range kill. Contact comes through. Resmoke goes down. Try and slow the play. Work behind that smoke. Gambit might just have to try and push through it. Rotates are taking some really long time here for Heroic. They might just allow them to get the post plant in. Axel going through the smoke. Trying to be a bit cheeky, but it doesn't quite work. The air bomb being dropped as well. Inter's got a snake down out to the open to grab it and get it planted. If they can get a bomb plant, that would be positive. Entities to try and grab a little bit of extra money. Can he plant safe behind first boxes? He'll tap it and try to look for kills instead. Try to damage Heroic. But finally, that plant will be secured. 3v3 retake. If Inter's clutches this, that will be the most spectacular clutch that we would have seen so far, at least on the B stream. To his left-hand side, the CT's pressing in. How do they look? Making a lot of noise towards this behind the pillar. Gets a dink off, but no more than that to stown. The fuse that will be found. Heroic will have 11. Gambit do secure a bomb plant with their pistols, though. So that might be some bonus cash at the very least going into the next rifle gun round. Grab all the main weapons here for the CT side. Try to ensure that the uh, main rifles stay in. Again, broken economies for the CT side. And yeah, they will grab the AWP here on TSS, so... 14-11, three rounds of difference. Gambit back up on the rifle buy. And for Heroic, that's that's really vital there that they just wait for that defuse, make sure that that AWP gets recovered to chuck back over to Kadian. Even running a double orb setup now coming into round 26. The first time that we've seen it in this second half on the CT side for Heroic. Three rounds the difference. We've seen them in this kind of position before. Gambit, though, have only managed two T rounds and both of them were in a row. AWP from Kadian is actually playing out towards a B side this time around. Double ops in for Heroic. Gambit. Necessary uh, round to take here. And you can see they're back to the passive styles of defaults with one player in Hobbit leaning up to the apartments. That's all the aggression they've got here. And Heroic will hear bullets firing down range, get info to the obvious places where the T's would be at, but in overall information gain, there's basically nothing to work with. They're slowly going in towards brackets, and they're being relatively silent about it. Although their utility's given their play away to an extent, they haven't made a lot of footsteps, haven't shown their card, really. I wonder what Gamma do with this. They just try and maybe smoke off Moto, or just try and wrap in towards the A site. We've got no presence up towards the top of Banana. Nothing in Banana at all, other than Axel just waiting for any kind of over-aggression. Getting closer to 40 seconds left on the clock. This has to be an A commitment. The time's running short. Axile finding some breathing room over to Banana. Maybe a last second rotation if they want to fake it out, but they've got to deal with those two CTs there. Three on the central site defense on A. But Gambit running this timer low. Does Axile draw any attention away from his position? If he gets a kill, that might be a way to start things off. But bursting up, no rotation from the CT side. 19 seconds. They're going to have to act real quick here. Seeing nothing coming in from Speedway. Utility thrown out. Player in the corner. Gets that frag together. Inters trades it back. Hobbit checking the pick control. But they've got this player in the second position. Back in the back oh, corner. The There's a corner bomb. Plot. That's going to be enough, Shiro. Go plant central side in the midst of the Molotov. He has to go it. Heroic. With one kill, secure the 12th. And Gambit, oh, just so close. But with the timer so low, it costs him everything. No way.
way! No way! That just happened for Heroic! Gambit run the clock incredibly low. They have Axel towards the top of Banana, trying to sell the fake as much as he can. And Nico got that first contact out for Moto. A one-on-one -on -one trade comes through. We see Tessa struggling as well, but it's the AWP of Star that's able to find the connection. What a big kill! If it was on anyone else, it probably wouldn't have mattered, but it was on the bomb carrier, Jay. The bomb gets dropped. It gets re-picked up by Shiro. It goes down, but not in enough time. Oh, when you think about how many players got traded, Kadian was the only player alive. No way. Oh, man. Tech pause for Heroic here. And despite all odds, they have still found themselves a... Uh, A serious comeback. <laughs> and again, if Gambit choke this, if they lose this map to Heroic after getting a 12-3 start to try and bring it back and be competitive in this series, that might be the ultimate defeat for this side. Like, if they can keep it competitive, yeah. if they can be able to hold down this map and keep it at a 2-1 series against Heroic, even if they do lose it, then at least they can say, look, we went the distance against one of the top teams in the world. We eliminated Mouse Sports in the lower bracket, you know. We came through confidently during the play-ins. Thinking, who do they who do they knock out during the play-ins? They came through upper bracket and uh, what was it? They knocked out Team One. That led to their uh, that led to their eventual elimination. Obviously, Mouse Sports no, in that position again. in the uh, it, it, yeah. They beat Mouse Sports twice in the same in, in in the same tournament. Obviously, leading to the situation where you know Mouse Sports were getting knocked down in the lowers anyway. So yeah. There are some feathers in the hat for Gambit. Two rounds of difference with Heroic, though. The comeback would be monstrous. But we're losing a lot of players. The buy will be timid. Yeah, look, uh, they've got the AWP in play, but you think about the investment they had in that last round. They were running double orps. They looked a really healthy buy. And with only one player surviving of KD, and even Tessus is going to be just on that MP9 Gambit. Probably realize how close they have been on some of these T side rounds, but just haven't been able to get over that hurdle. That was another really good chance there. But Heroic, they are still in this. They are not going to go down without a fight. They are going to look to try and see if they can continue to bring this back. And making a bit of a read of heavily stacking up the B side. Now, we know towards the top of Banana, they've been bringing sort of you know, sometimes three or four players over, but then rotating them back towards the A side. That's not what they're doing here in round 27. Banana control early for Gambit. They've managed to force down Kadian. Still down, gets the opening kill on Afani. Incendiary's up. Smoke back. He's going to try bait in the AWP. No, he doesn't overextend too far. For sure to get that kill would be huge for the Gambit side, but he doesn't manage to do so. Reloads in, nades up. Damage is going to continue to get done. Smoke down towards Cross. They're going to push ahead of their CT smoke. It seems to be the case here. Borat caught off, taken back by Inter. Spray blind from the CTs at CT spawn. Flash for Kaylee will allow down to start peeking in. They talk about him being one of the best. Let's see if he can prove it in his clutch. No, Axile takes the kill and forces Heroic to save. And Gambit finally approached the final huddle. 15 to 12. It's map points. Oh, they get there when it counts. A heroic, unfortunately, played that so passive over a B. And for Borup, he had a bit of a tough time. The flash came over the top, and he was almost caught in a little bit of hesitation. Wasn't sure if he wanted to go forward or back. And he ends up trying to retreat, but just getting spammed down. And once that flash tries to come in to get down aggressively, if he doesn't find anything, then they've just got to save immediately. Hold on to the three players of Nico, Kadian, and Tessa. Gambit. Oh, imagine the pressure being taken away now, knowing that at least overtime can be there, but we've got to 15 on our opposition's map pick. It hasn't been easy, certainly in the second half, but they've got there. They just need one more good... That nade from Inters is going to take it down. Oh, actually, the, the bomb explosion that takes him down, but the HE is still good enough to just push him past that final little bit. And look at the buy for Heroic here. Orp 
and M4 were the only rifles. Couple SMGs passed around. Stown gonna get picking up the AWP. No, passes back to Kadian. And those two Deagles in for Heroic. They wanna buy like this a handful of rounds ago, which stopped Gambit from getting to map point in the first place. Can they do it again? And heads up into the banana control once again. Gambit going back to this passive default. I mean, given how few times this has worked out for them, I'm not a big fan, but again, Hobbit will try aggress towards the apartments and may challenge on Nico directly. Hearing footsteps here, noise being made. Can he isolate the kill on this man out here? No, they're going to back off. Yeah, this is a very heavy, aggressive apartment stance coming through from Maroc. They've got two players out towards the stairs, and we've well, got to wonder when at least one of them starts pushing forward to just get some information. Kadian with the AWP on a crossfire set, Hobbit peeking in, and the AWP can't find the connection. Hobbit finds that first, but the trade comes back. Nico can pick the elk back up, push it into the other side. Of the apartments for someone else to get it. You need that M4 to stay in as well. Stown's on the other side of the B site, however, so there's no real way that he can get to get one of those rifles. Tess has to be the man to take the M4 instead. Fast playing from Gambit onto the B play. Stown ready with the Eagle up. One kill for the SMG, two kills for the SMG. In fact, Borup looking against the AWP. Sure knows it is a point blank. Eventually gets that kill to a two versus two. But still, Heroic doing all that they can to hold down the bomb site and try to keep the defensive rolling. Even man standing for the retake. AWP out for Nubox from Shiro, trying to get a bit of an angle. Tessus has been able to push forward into pool. I don't think he was seen on that jump peak coming out. Info's gone the other way, though. Tessus knows the AWP's out towards Dark. Nefani looking the other way. Oh, Tessus is going to try and get both kills. Gets that first, tries to connect onto the second. They've got to get onto that bomb. They've got no kit. They've no got the kill, way. but if they got there in time, I don't know if they've got it. I don't think they do, Jay. Have they got the time? Oh, it's going to be close. Nico. It's going to be very close. Oh. Oh, they've He's done it. it, boys! He's got it! Heroic! Continuing to make heroic plays here on Inferno to keep themselves in it. It's a great effort by Hobbit. If he got that second kill on Nico, then maybe that's a very different story. But Bob having his moments and everything, that SMG probably turned the tide of the whole round there. And for Gambit. They just can't break the cycle. 15 13, still map point up for them. Here he's down, Bart plays in, Stan with AWP, quickly picks up Shiro, falls right back as a trade is still good. T still ongoing here. Nade on Hobbit should take him down, and indeed it does. Smoke back, Incendiary's forward, and Gamma get the bomb to the site. Close climb coming in for Gambit, but it's a man advantage up for the seat side. More damage coming through. It's actually the USB. The Molly coming out towards a pool position is going to force Inters out to the open. He's burning down to about half HP and a heroic in here in so many numbers. Inters peeking out from CT. Boat goes down to the banana position, tries to peek back in. AWP doesn't find the shot. Axel just trying to waste as much time as possible. They've got a kit and play their piece together. Axel taking a lot of damage and heroic have done it again. Another retake go the way of the Danes. 14 rounds. Now up for the Danes. One more to bring it to overtime. What a comeback this has been from Heroic. Gambit. Not like this, boys. So quick into the B site. You thought that maybe they could siphon off the CTs from the retake, but no, Heroic continuing to play with absolute confidence in their style. And now one round to the OT board. Gambit have the full buy. They're limited on utility by a factor of two. And the double orb set up in for Heroic. Kanian straight in, ready to receive. Down to the mid control, looking on second mid for T-side contact. And nobody is giving up the ghost here. Gambit do not want to lose their opening kills. So again, it's this same passive default we've seen time and time again. Look at how healthy the buy is for Heroic. We've got kits in play, lots of utility, double orbs coming out, no SMGs. And very passive from Heroic too. Hardly any aggression coming through outside of that initial forward stance coming out from Katie and looking out towards second mid. A lot of banana control being taken, but it looks like it's going to be retaken by the CT side. Axel finds that first pick. Nades and Flash is trying to drive Stown away. Molotov in, Axel will take some damage. One T-side player close towards Tessa as Stefani. Right around this corner, AWP boost up. They're going to hear it. Is he going to swing forward at the moment? 
Smokes down. He's going to back off instead as now the CTs focus on their B kit. Will Gambit commit to this? Two lurkers out mid. That bomb's retaining, actually. It might be another A play here. I think you're right. They're going to fake B. They're going to try and bait out the rotations. But Cadian's still staying here from long. And as soon as he gets a peek, as soon as he gets a bit of a contact, they're going to know it's an A site and bring those players right back. 30 seconds on the clock. Gambit have got to act. They've got to act on Nico first and foremost. M4 back a pit. Only a few moments here. Cadian knows what's going on. Flashbang turn away from Nades up against his position. They take that first player down. Cadian on site. Dealt with by Nafani. And it's a 5v2 Gambit on the precipice of finally taking this map at a 12-3 half. Heroic brought the comeback, but I don't think it's going to be enough here. Tesses with the most impossible clutch to make happen for Heroic. He's got the kit. He's got the M4. He's got no utility and... Well, the... I just don't even know how he goes for this. He doesn't. Shiro shots him down 16-14. And map 3 is calling after the break. Never die. In history, this Gambit side will take a map above Heroic of the six that they've played so far. This is the first one. And who would have thought it would have been Inferno above Overpass Dwayne? But that's how things have worked out. They brought the comeback. They brought the thunder. And now they're here to play. Map 3 is calling. But before we get there, Inferno, dude. Like, such a close affair. But there was such a one-sided CT half from the, uh, the Gambit boys at the start of the map up. Like, how were they able to achieve such excellence?
Yeah, look, I think from the start, they looked so on point individually. They played with so much confidence and you just had Shiro and Axel doing their own things. They were just, you know, playing so free and so individual and we were seeing some really good clutches some really good shots coming through from shiro and then it got to a bit of a point where heroic started sort of playing their own game they started knuckling down and you've got to think that that must have been very frustrating for gambit to think that they were up 12 to 1 and it went all the way to 30 maps but they've done it in the end they can at least kind of sit back for a little bit and go few we've done it we've got this map now let's focus on mirage and play some cleanest counter-strike yeah, absolutely. Like the guys that we've been talking about all day, obviously Hobbit mentioned it in the interview prior to this uh, map up. He mentioned obviously Axile's an underdog player so you have to watch for. Like, you know, he can be just as good as Shiro. I think they both proved that in that first half. But it was Shiro the man and Sean in the second half as Axile sort of fell off a little bit. Do you think that was yeah. part and parcel to the reason why in the end Gambit had to lose so many rounds and why that map up went going the distance that it did? I don't think so. Like, I don't want to put it all on a couple of players. I think that Gambit as a whole just got very lacklustered and maybe just too overconfident. We saw has, has some of those rounds, especially on T-side, how slow they were running down the clock. And I, I thought that Heroic really started to show up. Uh, they didn't really do that at all in the first half. Is their map pick. They had a really good comeback. It could have been a little bit down to maybe the opening advantages not being won because we didn't quite see those players step up like they did in the first half. But overall, it was just Gambit really trying to claw back and eventually get the victory forward. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it did look like Gambit were, you know, were on the warpath. Um, but Heroic, they themselves played a much more confident game. I want us to think that there were yep. some entities and some elements where the Gambit side were playing very scared. You know, again, I hate to go back to Axile, but one of the key moments in those rounds that really gave it up to me was when he was playing on the uh, apartment's balcony, ready to try and go back and cross that bomb to the side. But he was playing slowly and carefully, trying to see if he can make a mistake from the CT side or just wait for something to an opportunity to open up. And instead, Heroic just adjusted against that side and they were able to take down Afani in the end take down Axile off the back of that uh, of that patient. So it's like if they don't play confident going into Mirage, then this could actually end up being a much more one-sided affair for the heroic boys, I want to say. They've got to play confident. Like that's the only way for me I can see Gambit actually taking this last map. Like we know what they can be like when they're We know what they can be like when they're confident. And it, it comes down to the lack of experience for some of those players. You know, when you're up a massive, massive, massive margin of rounds and then things don't start going your way, you can get the nerves going forward. It's a lower bracket game as well. You're facing off against a top team in the world. And we did see them crack under pressure. So hopefully now they've taken a little bit of break. They've been able to sort of just take the time to refresh and realize what has happened there because they only just won that out. They didn't get that 12-1 start. They would be no like yeah. that's that's the reality of the situation um you know i think if they want to get something going up here on, on, on mirage they're gonna have to be able to do some serious work they're gonna have to be able to pull something ridiculous out of the hat for my money because um uh, you know like if heroic are allowed to control and if they're allowed to control against their favorite half then we're going to be looking at a two one that like we expected um you know except just in the cases that maps were swapped in the maps one and two yeah um but for Gambit, you know, like obviously we're talking about them translating their results from tier two to tier one. Uh, Mirage is one of those maps that hasn't produced as many amazing results for this side. It is one of those ones where it has got a decent win rate on it. But again, you take a look at the level of the uh, of the competition. You take a look at who they're faced off against. I think the biggest name in this particular list is like Complexity or Spirit, um, which to be to their credit, they have beaten those guys out. But against Heroic, is this the kind of map where Gambit can win upon? Uh, they can. Uh, will they, though? Uh, it's a tough question. I, I still don't think that they've got what it takes, especially going into a, a last map of a series. But you look at the map, they've actually got some really teams in the world. Not very often. It talks to itself. We know how deep the map pulls and show up when it counts in map three of a best of three. Well, both sides are giving each other a run for their money. Close affairs on overpass 